today I'm going to show you how to convert this old style two prong outlet to a more modern three prong outlet. Now the only way you can avoid routing new cable is if the old style is this armored style cable. It has an armored sheath. It's going to have two conductors inside, one black, one white, one hot, one neutral. We're going to use this sheath here as the ground. First, we of course have to turn off the breaker in question. Pay attention, that this is a 20 amp uh, uh, breaker. Next, take your multimeter, turn it to AC voltage, and double check to make sure that there indeed is no more voltage in this outlet. Check both prongs, and of course get it inspected by a cat. Pull off the cover. Next, undo these two screws here. Now pay attention here. I don't know if you can read it, but that reads as a 15 amp outlet. I don't know if the previous owner installed it or if the house was just built this way. Judging by how much dust is back here, perhaps it was the contractors who built this house. Now that's a mistake, as you notice down below. This sits on a 20 amp breaker, and although this is 12 gauge cabling, this outlet would not be able to survive. I mean, it's you can you would be able to plug in an AC and a hair dryer. It'll probably still work okay, but then the outlet would melt itself, much like this one right here. This is a similar situation I did earlier on another outlet, and I pull it out and I realized that they had a 15 amp outlet undersized for the circuit that it was sitting on. This is a fire hazard. Don't do it. Therefore, I'm correctly going to put this tamper-resistant 20 amp outlet. You don't want to undersize your outlet relative to your breaker, nor relative to your cable gauge. If you notice that your cabling is not sized properly, 12 gauge is for 20 amps, 14 gauge is for 15 amps. If you see that the cabling is for some reason 14 gauge while the circuit breaker is 20 amps, replace the circuit breaker and downsize it to a 15 amp breaker. Let's keep going, undo all of the screws, and also pay attention which cable is connected where. I can see that the left cable is connected to the bottom nuts here, or bottom bolt lugs here, and uh, the cable coming from the right is connected here to the top. Usually the convention is supply, the line, comes from the bottom, and the load for daisy chaining comes out from the top. I don't know if they followed that convention, but in modern days, that's what we do. Once the screws are all the way out, use a flathead screwdriver to bend the copper out of the screws. Once it's out, it's probably a good idea to get all this ancient dust out of here, clean it out a little bit. <sighs> By the way, if you notice that the wires coming out of here are not copper but aluminum, like silver, I highly recommend you just don't reuse that. Yank those cables and run Romex to it because there was a brief period of time when they used aluminum, but aluminum tended to oxidize, create aluminum oxide, which was highly flammable and would eventually burst into flames. A whole bunch of houses burned down back in the day because of that. Next, we're going to make the ground connection. So now, normally, a ground screw looks like this. But if you can, try to find a self-tapping ground screw. You can tell because it has this notch here. This is important because we're about to put it in one of those holes here in the steel box, but those are rarely ever threaded, probably not threaded. 
and it'll just make our lives easier if it's a self-tapping screw. Take six inches of copper wire, 12 gauge, or it can be insulated ground wire, doesn't really matter. Bend a, as a loop, insert the ground screw such that it's snug. Then we will take a flathead screwdriver, a really thick flathead screwdriver, and we will simultaneously put the ground screw in while pressing up against it with a screwdriver, and we will try to get it to thread in that hole. Can be a bit tough and will take a considerable amount of force. All right, I've gotten it in there. Now I'm just going to twist and I'm going to put that screw in until it is flush against the wall and I cannot, can no longer move the ground wire. All right, I've gotten the screw in there and that ground wire is tight. It will not budge. And of course, make sure that when you loop it, loop it in a clockwise fashion such that as you screw it in, it doesn't unravel. Next up, we'll take a brand new spanking outlet. Take some needle nose pliers and create a loop on the ground wire, but don't entirely close it. Next, put in your outlet and put that around your ground screw there and uh, begin tightening it. Now, using either some needle nose pliers or a flathead screwdriver, make that loop tighter around the screw such that it is closed. Now you can tighten the screw using either a flathead or a Phillips. Then you will connect all your uh, wires in the same order that you pull them off in. If you notice, this side will have gold or brass colored screws, while this side will have silver colored screws. The brass colored ones are for the hot side, and it's also usually labeled here. Same thing on this side. This will be for the neutral, which is the white. So black, hot, brass, white, neutral, silver. It's generally a good idea to start wearing gloves at this point because these screwdrivers are sharp and tend to slip. And once you've got it looped around one of the screws, you can use a flathead screwdriver to sort of tighten the wire around the screw. You can also try using needle nose pliers if you can get them in there. Once it's all done, it should look something like this very little exposed copper and tightly wound around the screw. And remember 12 gauge is much more difficult to work with than 14 gauge so just be patient, take it easy. So once all that's done screw these two into the box. As you're screwing it down make sure you have a good amount of clearance on both sides. And also, as, a, as an aside, some electricians swear by putting electrical tape around the screws, presumably to make it easier to work on while it's hot. I'm not sure, really. Finally, put on your outlet cover. Looks good. Let's go turn that breaker back on. It didn't pop, that's a good sign. All right, we're back at the outlet. Get yourself a ground tester. This one's from General Electric model MS112H. It's about eight, maybe $9. I'm gonna plug it in. These two lights here mean that I'm good, correct. Good, good. It means I got hot, neutral, and ground. And course to be absolutely thorough let's check our voltage here all right come on there we go 121 volts 
both outlets. Excellent. And that's how you convert a two-prong to a three-prong outlet. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.